Hey, sorry about that delay. That was fun, you know, computers and nonsense. That's always fun, right? Welcome to the Elite Creator Panel, and I call it that for a very good reason. The gentlemen up on these, this here stage, sitting at these tables, these guys represent years of dedication to this craft of creating content, years and years and years. Many, many hours, and they have created some incredible stuff for you guys to watch. Now, I am very excited to go through the line. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna announce who's sitting, sitting here. In case you, for some reason, don't know, to my right is the legendary Mr. Guns and Gear. <laughs> Next to him is one of my favorite people on this planet, Mr. Kevin Dixie. <laughs> and then we have Mr. Camarado, Sean Heron. <laughs> then we have my good friend, Curtis, from VSO Gun Channel. And I, I didn't tell you guys this in the graphics, but uh, we added two other legends here. We've got Jared from Guns and Gadgets. And of course, Anthony from Arm Scholar. And wrapping us up, we have Jonathan from Tactical Toolbox. Thank now, if you guys want to get ready to ask some questions, we've got microphones on both sides of the room. We're going to throw out some t-shirts for people that do ask the great questions. If you want to go ahead and line up right now, that would be awesome. I'm going to kick it off with a question uh, I have for the gentleman up here. What has been the biggest challenge for you this year in creating content? Anybody can jump on it. YouTube. In what <laughs> way? Explain that. That's too simple. Uh, the uh, content changes as far as like the guidelines and everything. This has been a constant march over the years towards more restrictive guidelines for everything that can be posted. Uh, it, it seems well, we know that they don't like us, and it's been like that for a long period of time. I've been doing this long enough to remember that you had to submit an essay and apply to the partner program to even be considered for monetization. And uh, they have just used little tricks and nuances to make it harder for us to be able to continue to do what it is, from everything from age-restricting content to demonetizing content to just outright removing content. Uh, everybody on this panel has been affected in some way in the last year, in the last month even. Uh, and I think that it, you can see how it's changed the content over the years. And I'm sure that this one, this time around, is going to be no different. <clears throat> that answer the question? Sorry. Yes, that does. Sorry, I was dealing with the technical stuff still. Uh, anybody else have any major challenges they're dealing with? I wanted to expand on what he was saying because we say demonetizing and age restriction, but we don't care about the money portion. It's when those things happen, they suppress our videos. That's right. So that's why that's important. You sound like you've been shouting all day. I've been shouting all week. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> Putting in full yeah. effort. Yeah, so I'd say my biggest challenge is getting people off of YouTube. Um, trying to get people to follow me elsewhere, whether it be other video platforms like Rumble or Twitter or wherever else, because, or my email list or, or whatever, because um, the realization that every day becomes more and more likely that it will at best be censored and uh, possibly removed. So that's really it, getting people to places that I can reach them reliably. I think my biggest challenge, uh, besides what they've already said, because obviously that affects all of us, but I think my biggest challenge is time. Yeah. Uh, it was funny, Mike said something to me, Mr. Gunzagir said something to me, I don't know, a year or two ago, and I told him what I had planned on doing, he's like, dude, you don't have enough time. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever, and boy, has that been true. <laughs> boy, has that been true. So. Right now, we're going to take some questions from you guys. Hey, if you're out there watching live, I, I want you all to submit your questions. And I also want you to check out our live stream sponsor, Samson Manufacturing. You guys can go to their website. 
and check them out. They make some incredible stuff. They've been walking around here all day for the live, the, the people sitting here. If you haven't seen the Army Man around, it's absolutely ridiculous. There's Chris. Hey, anybody that's looking for the Army Man guy, right there. That's him back there. Yeah. Shout out to Samson for supporting these guys. This is incredible. Thank you, Chris. We appreciate you. All right, let's take some questions. Go ahead, David. Yeah, um, for the product review guys, um, I have a question. We're a manufacturer. What are the top three things y'all are looking for when you're looking at new product to review, aside from being new? Top three things. Okay. Let's make it real fast. Let's go down the line real fast. Oh, um, I'm first. My bad. <laughs> no, you go. I didn't audience, know which audience one. interest. It has to be something people are interested in. Uh, otherwise, no one will watch it. Right. I want to see something different. I want to see something different because I can get behind. Like, if I'm excited, my, I know the people that watch TGC will probably get excited. And if it's the same crap everybody's been doing, I don't want a part of it. It's boring. Not only that, but the video won't do anything for the company because it's the same old crap. And the audience will go, oh, yeah, it's the same old crap. That's what I want. Anybody else? I would say as, a, as an instructor, it has to be something that I know that's going to improve or save your life. Mm. All right? It has to be something that's not gimmicky, so I'm not wasting your consumer dollar. I want your dollar to be invested well. And it also has to be a company that seems like it's not related to the product, but if I find that that company doesn't stand for you and the rights of the Second Amendment, it's a no-go. By the way, shout out to Matador Arms for supporting the event. They make some incredible stuff. Go check it out, Matador Arms. I think for me, I look at not only those things, but also what problem does it solve and does the price justify the solving of that problem? If it doesn't, nobody cares. I think one of my favorite things in, in making content is, is saying that no one cares about a certain thing. That's probably one of my favorite things to do is just be like, yeah, no one cares about this. I'm sorry you invested years of your life into this product that no one cares about. But hey, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. Thank you, David. Come up and get a shirt. Come up and get a little extra shirt, brother. All right, let's go over here. My man. Uh, Sean, um, we like shooting. A couple of years ago, um, stopped bleeping out. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, stopped bleeping out swearing. Um, and has now moved towards more of, you know, embracing more of a uh, freedom of expression. Um, has that impact, how did you, how do you feel that's impacted the show and has it impacted your relationship with any of your vendors at all? That's a great question. Yeah, we added 32% 32 per, 32 more swearing. And uh, yeah, we stopped bleeping it and actually, oddly enough, it, it increased. We saw like a very steep climb and it increased that. It didn't change any of the, of, of the other things that we did. And uh, no, I mean, everyone knew we were cussing, right? Like literally it was just bleep, 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 <laughs> bleep, over and over and over again. So it it's was like nice. somebody died when listening. Yeah. Just beep. Yeah, the so time. for the first time, people actually got to hear the show before it was just sounded like a hospital at, at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, it, didn't, it did nothing but positive. Did, did, that, did any company like reject it in any way? No, because they know who they're getting into bed with. Yeah, like, right? shenanigans. Literally. Or should I say shenanigans? Yeah, th there's a thing that I do where I, I talk to them before we sign any contracts, before any money changes hands, and I say, listen, like, you, you have to understand who we are and that I don't care if you take your money away because we will not change because this is, this is our show. This is what it is. If you want to be a part of that, that's awesome. And I think it'll bring both of us great value. But ultimately, if, if you're not prepared for that, if you're not prepared to get complaints about the worst people that anyone has ever known, uh, like, just don't do it. It's not worth it. Rad. Thank you, brother. We appreciate you. You want a shirt? All right. Come up here. I got you one. Let's take a question over here. Hi, Matt. Hey. Um, Thanks, brother. As people who are using things, are there any trends in what's being manufactured that you're excited about? I'll give an example for me, seeing like CACs downward ejecting BCG, PTRs like foam suppressor. Like what are really smart people doing that you guys are excited to see mm. grow from there? Anybody? I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a gun guy. Like, everything in this place excites me. 
Uh, my nipples are never going to recover from today. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I, I love it all, and like the longer that I do this, the more, the more I realize how difficult all of these things are. It's not just coming up with an idea. It's eventually people are going to buy that idea, and then you have to support that idea after, and then you have to improve upon that idea. And uh, yeah, I love it all, and the more that I do this, the more that I love it. I think the rise in popularity of low back pressure, uh, how, however you define that, silencers is a good thing for everyone, for all the users and the companies. And then combine that with the fact that the wait time is down so much, I mean, they're selling like crazy. Um, and obviously there's a lot of benefits to that with common use and other legal things, but um, you know, two, three years ago, it was basically Huxworks and no one else. And now there's at least seven or eight companies making similar type products. So I think that's cool. You, you know what really gets me excited these days is seeing people integrate new technology into the manufacturing process and coming up with some bonkers ideas through that. I mean, we've seen people from outside the industry, they're manufacturing you know, aerospace or whatever the hell, medical nonsense, and they're going, oh, well, this might work in the gun industry, and they're coming at it from uh, not a gun engineer perspective, but just a regular you know, innovation perspective. And I think we've, like Mike said, with the, the foam and all that like that, we have seen some bonkers stuff coming out. And just the pace of new stuff is increasing rapidly. And that's what I like. I just like to see new ways of accomplishing goals effectively, more affordably, all of that kind of stuff. You know, because th now the trickle-down economy, I mean, look at the price of the double stack 1911-2011 sort of platform. I mean, we have seen those go from unattainable, like, oh, they're only race guns, to now everybody wants one, everybody's selling one, some are better than others, and uh, we've seen some really, really neat stuff come out of that. Yeah. That is only one segment, you know? Yeah. Anybody else want to add? Uh, not only as far as, like, the innovation in that space is concerned, but being able to meet the demand of the consumer, because... In the last couple of years, we've seen a huge explosion in the number of people who are interested in the Second Amendment, interested in uh, participating in the consumer space. The companies that are using these technologies to expand the ability to meet that demand is really huge because doubling an industry in three years or four years is unprecedented, in, uh, particularly in our space. Rad. Great question, brother. Come up and grab a shirt. Thank you. Over here. All right, so my question is, as uh, we get more modern guns, uh, we went from wood stocks to like uh, polymer to now we're getting into chassis and stuff. And the, a lot of the modern bands are assault weapon style, which is basically what they're making because that's what the market's going to and that's where they've developed. How do we change the mindset to basically modernize? Like auto industries are pushing EVs, everybody's excited about new advancements and phones and stuff, but they hate innovation or modernization of guns. Sorry, what was your question? How, how do we push that, basically help the mindset that the gun industry needs to and can evolve like every other industry? Oh, sure. But they, all the modern, they call them assault weapon bans and everything else, but that's just what standard guns are being made as now. So, so I, think, I think one of the, the most difficult things is for brands to get out of their own way. Mm -hmm. You know, they, these, um, a lot of folks are very emotionally tied to the products that they create, with, and that has some benefits, but a lot of times they are afraid to scrap an idea that may not push, and they, they may not want to invest the money and they stand in their own way of, of really, really pushing. And I know everybody up here encourages it, you guys encourage it, uh, but it doesn't always happen at the pace that we expect or want. Anybody else? And I think to add to that is um, you guys are the power. If you look at everything that's happened as far as litigation wins this past year, it's all been regular Joes. The one that we got yesterday, this Chevron deference, uh, Smackdown was a herring fisherman who was just pissed off because not only did he have to accept a government agent on his boat, but he had to pay for the damn thing too, right? And he just said, screw that, I'm going to sue you. 
So when it comes to changing the perception of these felt weapons, um, <laughs> what was that? One more time? He does that pretty a, good. A felt weapon. <laughs> you, you guys are out there using them. Post about it. Show people that it's normal stuff. When it comes to like the cans, for instance, the, the negative connotation of like the cans, oh, they're too expensive, oh, I have to go through this. And, uh, all day. Those are on the all verge day. of getting smacked down in a big way because they are common use. We know that they're common use. We have the numbers. And we just have to repeatedly push that narrative and show people that we're just regular old people using these regular old tools. tools. They're not some assassin thing out there. And it's just normal. We have to normalize that stuff by showing people that that's what it is to be a gun owner. Right. You know, I would, if I, can I? Yeah, go ahead. Nothing anybody said was wrong. What I would like to add to that is um, gun owners need to also get out of their own way, right? Mm. So we have to be, in, intelligence is the proper application of knowledge. And if you understand that you are in a culture war, right? So when political figure gets up and says, how did you do it? Do your thing. A fault weapon. There you go. <laughs> All right. So when political figures get up there and do that kind of thing, what we have to understand is the marketing for that campaign that goes out to one part of the country is totally different when it goes out to another part of the country, right? And then what happens is we meet in this beautiful place called social media, right? And then we spend more time arguing with old talking points instead of being intelligent because they are attacking us in a very intelligent way. We refuse to acknowledge that we are in a culture war. It is what it is. So yes, it is great. You go out and you buy that new gun, post that new gun. That is absolutely fine. But make sure you refine your argument and your approach to why you have it. Talk more about your family. You know, it is great to understand and acknowledge 1776. I can't get people to remember what happened in 1996, right? So sometimes it's with some people you just have to be smart in the way you approach it, right? And the other thing I'll add to that, if you want help with, uh, once you get past the culture war and how you dialogue, and, and no guys, like everybody up here works in this industry and we, we try our best, but like, like Curtis said, you guys are the power, man. Make no doubt about that. So the way that you talk to neighbors, the way that you talk to friends, the way that you represent yourself, your family, your last name, your legacy, and gun owners means a lot. And on top of that, start holding when it comes to freedom and fighting back against us, do it again. Do the thing. A thought weapon. Can I change seats, please? <laughs> uh, <laughs> when it comes to fighting back against that, and I have no problem saying it, before you go spend your money on that newly developed, you know, modern style rifle, ask the companies what are they doing to protect your rights before you invest your dollar. And then we, we can start seeing more effort being put into making sure that somebody else, if you don't have time to do it, at least your dollar is circling back around to make sure we're fighting for your rights. You know, that, that actually came up on the Second Amendment panel. That topic of culture war came up on the Second Amendment panel this morning, and the, the term that popped up was asymmetric warfare against us. Mm. And we are being attacked in ways that we can't even fathom. <coughs> and we need to be aware of it and push. Absolutely. Hey. Thanks, guys. This is rad. I also want to give a shout out to, yeah, 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 come get a t-shirt. I want to give a shout out to our other sponsor, Cloud Defensive. Anybody up here use Cloud Lights? Yeah, some of the best out there. They are the sponsor of this section. If you want to know about some of their incredible lights, go to their website. The company is called Cloud Defensive. Uh, Sean actually got me hooked on their stuff, and now I am super pumped about it. Yeah. Weapon lights, handhelds, all kinds of good stuff. Affordable, fancy, they got it all. Check it out, Cloud Defensive. Let's take an online question. Orly, you want to spool one up for me, buddy? Orly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so, <clears throat> let's see. Get this closer to the mic. Uh, in your opinion, guys up there, uh, what's the most effective thing we can do locally to prevent gun control and help get people like us elected? Okay. Get involved. Stop waiting for somebody else to do it for you. Just do it. I said earlier, there are almost 10 million gun owners in this country that aren't even registered to vote. That is disgusting. We sit here, we complain about what the left is doing, but with 10 million people to join this fight of fighting against tyranny, we wouldn't be in the situation we're in. In this state alone, there was like 167,000 people who don't vote and they're gun owners. So that's a big problem we need to overcome. People think that their vote does not count, but that's what they've been training us to think. 
uh, because when we don't vote, the fox gets into the hen house unopposed. We need to stop that. Absolutely. Brandon Herrera lost by 400 votes. Yeah. Oh, wow. 400 votes. And we could have had one of these jackasses <laughs> in Congress. Right. I resemble that. <laughs> Additionally, I want to add that um, obviously the national level organizations, the gun rights groups and stuff like that are excellent. Um, but your local and state ones are very powerful as well. Um, if you guys watch my channel, I every now and then go down that rabbit hole. Wait, um, you make YouTube videos? Every now and then. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, like uh, for instance, South Carolina just got concealed carry. Um, and while that process was happening, I don't even live in South Carolina anymore. I used to. But I know the guys who run state organization. And um, so yeah, I mean, I was talking to them almost every day while it was happening, getting live feedback from senators, state senators, and state congressmen who were doing things to oppose it. And I was literally tagging them in real time on Twitter and being like, hey, tell your constituents why you're doing this. And like, legitimately, they were, they were scared. Like, they said that myself and one other guy who were really hammering them, that they basically went along with constitutional carry in South Carolina because of the pressure we were putting on them. And the pressure we put on them isn't me putting it on them. It's you guys retweeting, retagging. That's the real pressure. So, uh, but point is, all of that, all the information I was getting in real time was from, from a local South Carolina gun rights group that has three employees. You know what I mean? So that makes a difference. It really does. And Iowa residents, I know we're here, they are right around the corner. IFC is here. If you're looking for something to get involved and you live around here, go get involved. It's literally right here. You can do it. You can, it's right there. We brought them to you. Yeah, and I just wanted to kind of double down on what Mike just said. A lot of people don't understand that even these national orgs, they have state affiliates, and the state affiliates are broken down into county parts or commonwealth parts, and a lot of the times they operate just through a volunteer board. Um, they, have, they, need, they need help fundraising, but most of the time they need just volunteers. And so a lot of people think that, hey, I'm just going to donate money to the national orgs, and that's amazing. But sometimes manpower is way more important and these very small orgs operate lean and they need people and if you guys can come to a gun event go help them you know go operate a range day or something like that and get more people involved so hell yeah uh, i would say come up and get a t-shirt but that was online right yeah. that was online <laughs> yeah that's what i thought okay blue shirt what's up man um this is kind of a question from last year but y'all brought up or somebody brought up the question of what is the best way to support y'all? And y'all had said, you know, watching a video all the way through for the algorithms, you know, liking the videos, that helped put it in front of more people. Is that still the same thing we should be doing to help? It's, it's changed drastically, because really you just got to send me every one of your paychecks and that'll be fine. <laughs> that'll be fine. <laughs> no, that, I, I don't think that's changed a whole lot. No, watch it all the way through. Watch additional videos if you can. Session time is a big, huge thing. And interact, honestly, yeah. Like, Interaction's huge. Yeah. 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 If Engage if anything, with the content. Even if, if anything, it's just... more important now. Yeah. yeah. Sharing yeah. also. Sharing yeah. it with your all friends. The, all that stuff matters. You know, it all plays a good role. And, and we love every single one of you guys for being here and giving a shit about it. <laughs> like, that's the, I say that all the time, and I really mean that. Like, thank you for caring about what we all do. Because without you guys, we don't matter. None of us would, like, this is a weird career. Without you guys, we don't matter at all. So thank you for making us kind of matter in some weird way. Yeah. There you go. That's a great question. Thank you. You want a shirt? Sure. Hell yeah. Here, there's like four there. Take them. All right, let's take a question over here. Yeah. So YouTube was brought up and uh, Can you get closer to the mic, brother? Sorry. YouTube was brought up and supporting companies that support us can, you know, I know most of my viewership is sitting up on the stage now. So can the eight of you have a powwow and collectively decide on another platform besides YouTube to commit to oh putting boy. stuff there? Oh, well, boy. Well, we, we, we are all, as far as I know, already on all of those platforms. I'm not on Rumble. The okay, problem well. is, is the world, like, if we really want to push our agenda on retaining our rights and, and regaining our rights, we need to be where all the people are. You know, yeah, it'd be great to be in some niche section where it's just us in an echo chamber, but who are we going to reach? Us. We're not the issue. It's the rest of the people who are tone deaf to this, this area. So we have to be on Google, Facebook, YouTube. We have to be there. 
Um, and usually when people say, go, like, go to Rumble, we're there. And if people don't know that, that's part of the problem. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they have some work to do on that platform, and a lot of the other ones that have attempted it have done a piss-poor job of I, I, like showing everybody content. You know what I mean? You get tossed into a bucket full of uh, cat videos, and it's like YouTube restarting. They, the, the challenge that a lot of these platforms have is that they have to hit the ground running at 8 million miles an hour. Like, they are so behind the eight ball just starting now. And they don't have enough money to bring down YouTube. They don't. And if they you look at, likely won't. You know, if, it, if you, it's going to be a very long time, and we may get pushed out of YouTube, and we may be forced to go to another platform. But I personally have not seen another viable option yet. And, and the other thing is a lot of these platforms put, the, put that on us, right? They go, oh, you come to our thing, and, and your audience will follow which means they want free access to you guys, and we don't, we don't do that. We don't, we don't treat you guys like a, a, a tool. We don't do that. We say, listen, we want to make sure that these people are invested in the platform, and they need to invest in us so that we can bring it back to you guys. It's, it's not something where we do all the heavy lifting and they gain all the benefits. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. So they need to support us so that we can bring it back around for you guys. So the, to put that in perspective, like when he was saying hitting the ground running, like how fast you got to be going, the, a recent report came out that said that YouTube does more than all of the cable networks, all the news networks combined, right? So like to, for, for a competitor to show up, they have to have a lot of money, a lot of support, a lot of infrastructure. I'm not trying to take away from the fact that Rumble's done some great things, but as Jared said, by voluntarily leaving the platform, that would be the worst decision that any of us could make for the future of the Second Amendment. Yeah. There's a reason they want us off. That's the reason they keep trying to death by a thousand cuts to us, because they want us to voluntarily leave, because if they have to kick us off, it's bad for them, versus if we just throw up our hands and leave. That's, again, the worst decision we can, can make, because that is ceding the ground to the enemy, mm. and it's absolutely unacceptable. I agree. Thanks, Curtis. Come get a shirt, brother. Thank you for that question. All right, over here on the left. I know you probably don't want to go into brand no, no. name, you know, saying who's who, but can you know, give good examples give the wrong size? Of, of a company who didn't appreciate your review of an item? <laughs> like, so, uh, so you're saying, or was a company <laughs> mad? Yeah. Is that what you're asking? Does anybody have an example or can you <laughs> mention an item? <laughs> Oh boy. All right, I got one for you. Yeah. Uh, name uh, drop, I, name I, drop. So I, I feel comfortable talking about it because all the people there are gone now. Um, <laughs> nice. So years ago, probably six, seven years ago, Six Hours sent me a P226 Legion when it first dropped. And uh, actually, I actually, I like the gun. If, if, you, if you watch the review, you, you will never know what I'm about to tell you happened. Ooh. Uh, but this absolutely did happen. And yeah, the, the lady who was in charge of marketing then, she's gone. She doesn't work there anymore. Um, but basically, I just said that the type of finish the gun had wasn't as durable as some others. That's objectively Was true. Was that like verbatim, that's what you said? Yes. It wasn't as durable as some others? Correct. That's pretty vague. It, and Well, it's objectively true. Right, right sure, sure. Right. And so anyway, so like the review drops, I think nothing of it. She calls me, like screaming at me, talking about how terrible, like I called their finish and all this other stuff. It's a PVD finish for anybody. Uh, yeah. Like it's not as durable as my try. Like she that's, actually. That's not like my, it's not my opinion. Like it's <laughs> ask a metallurgist. You know what I mean? So <laughs> anyway, so then she follows up with this email, and is like, "You're dead to six hour. We're never talking to you again. We'll never work with you again." And so that happened. Cool. And then like, you know, she got fired, and. Uh, the new people came on and they're like, we'd love to work with you again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes. Any, anybody else got a good story? I declined to comment. Ah. I, I mean, I crap on stuff all the time. They, I don't know if they get mad I don't care. I don't care if they're mad. I've, I've had people tell me to take videos down. Like the, the, there is a product that is very popular uh, with people that have no idea what the F they're talking about through social media. I will not name it because I don't want them to get any free press. But I was threatened uh, because I called this product very dangerous 
uh, where you store a firearm in your vehicle and you flag your person. If it's a loaded firearm, you're flagging your passenger and potentially shooting them right in the face. And they're like, come check out this new thing. And they had like a wedge of foam. It was a piece of, it was very bad. It was very bad. Um, I that have, said, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care. And just something to add on to that, that I think a lot of viewers uh, don't understand because you guys have normal lives and don't, <laughs> don't, don't think about this. But like, for example, like Arrow's here and I work with them a lot, but like Aero, Aero Precision will never be my client, ever. You guys will always be my client. And, mm. so, and so like if something's bad, I'm going to say it because let's say Arrow or Sig in that example like wants to burn bridges with me. Like I don't care at all. Like as long as people are viewing and watching my channel and enjoying what, yeah. what I put out, like you guys are the customer, it's not them at, at all. Like, there's no company that's more value, valuable to me than my audience. Like, not a good question. That's very sweet, Mike. But it's true. <laughs> but it's absolutely true, it's because here's the thing. Like, we're talking in many cases about reviewing. Keep going. Keep going. What? You're good. Now they can oh. hear you. Oh, OK. Where was I? <laughs> talking uh, about reviewing. A thought weapon. Absolutely true, because uh, oftentimes we are talking about, <laughs> 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 because we're talking oftentimes about reviewing life-saving equipment. So if I am willing to compromise the ideals for which I am reviewing that product for whatever incentive it is to continue to work with that client, to continue to work with whoever that is, and I lie about it, one, you're going to know, mm -hmm. especially if it generates a pattern that I'm being untruthful about that. It's going to come out that that thing is actually a piece of junk. But now I have to live with the conscience that I am telling people to potentially use this life-saving piece of equipment and they get into a situation and it fails them, well, I'm, I don't know how many of you are religious, but that is a black mark on my eternal soul. Mm. And I have to not only live with that now, but I'll have to answer for that later. <laughs> so it's unacceptable to conduct any, even though um, you can run a for-profit business and have integrity at the same time, that does not mean that you can compromise certain standards that you use to do this type of work. Right. Yeah, nobody wins in that equation. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. Nobody wins. Great question. You want a shirt? Okay, cool. On the right, young man. Do you can somebody help him with that microphone? <laughs> Goodness gracious. Jump. But I didn't get help to talk the boy. about the thing that they said. Do you think the NFA is going to fall in our time? Oof. Ooh. The little guy with a huge question. I, oh, wow. I certainly hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think parts of it will, chunks at a time. Yeah. We're not going to get a single judge in this country to say all of it goes now immediately. It'll never, ever happen. Uh, but I think we're very close to having suppressors be a realistic device that everybody can use and not be so regulated. I mean, we can get them now, and I got one in four hours approved uh, two months ago. So Holy crap, yeah. four hours. Yeah. It's, it's, it's getting closer. Uh, but uh, we need we the people need to keep pressure on people and we have the orgs that are suing the ATF left and right to get it done so I think chunks of it will fall and uh, I think also if you look at short barrel rifles for instance some of the if you listen to the oral arguments of the uh, of the pistol brace case there were the they were like well what's the difference between a pistol brace and a and an SBR, why are we even doing this? There are many judges in the country that are like, oh, this is a dumb argument to begin with. So I think that part of that is also the, cons we as the, the gun users have to accept that piecemeal strategy as well. Like for instance, in the state of Ohio, it took forever for us to get concealed carry on the books and it sucked when we got it. And over time we've been able to make what I would consider the national standard for concealed carry that has been co-opted by state after state after state. We have to do the same thing with the NFA. We have to get the first thing, and then the next thing, and then the next thing, and then eventually we can all have legal machine guns. <laughs> that would be so good. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a couple of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hook him up. Hook him up. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. All right, my man. First of all, I want to say thank you for creating an event for us 2 a minded people come together. This is fantastic, and I, and I truly appreciate it. It's Thanks awesome. for being here, man. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Look at that shirt. It's, it's a beauty. It's not as nice as yours, Jared, but it's close. 
uh, as a content creator, I'm always trying to get over the next hump, right? The next uh, mile post. What are some of the things that you guys have done to get to that next level, whether it be subscribers or whatever? Can I just, I want to jump in on, because this is something important for all new content creators and just content creators in general. Don't chase milestones thinking that that is going to then magically resolve something for your content or in your brain or you're going to reach this milestone. A lot of guys will chase, you know, the first thousand subscribers or the first hundred thousand. Then, you know, oh, I want to get to 500,000. It's a grind regardless and no magic analytic mark or subscriber mark really is going to change. And I, and I know we always want to improve, but the best thing you can do for your content is just make it for the love of the game, pretty much. If you're passionate about what you do and you love it, it shouldn't matter what analytic mark you're at or what subscriber mark. And, and awesome. it, 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 trust me, no matter what, you will always be chasing the next level. Yeah. When you hit a million subscribers, you'll be chasing the demos and all of them for 10 million. So just kind of a word of caution. No, that's so that true. That's a badass answer. Yeah. When we started, there, there weren't guys with a million subscribers. No. The goalposts moved. Yeah. Like, there, there was no gun thing with it. was like a guy with 100,000 subscribers was, oh my, it was next level. Holy crap, look at all that. And, and it will continue to do that. Like, you know, seeing uh, guys like Demo Ranch and Hickok and these guys that are huge in terms of subscriber number, that, that was not a thing. And, and it, again, has just moved that goalpost. So the thing to focus on as a new content creator is making really good content. Like, if you make good content and you do good at your, that is like your job, the numbers follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I Brad. think like click-through rate and watch time, that's the true tell of how good you're engaging with your audience because they're going to watch everything you put out from beginning to end. If you want to strive for anything, strive for that, because that means you're doing that much better where they want to watch more of your content. Right. Yeah, there's no magical number of like how long a video needs to be or anything like that. The answer I always give when I'm asked that question is, the video needs to be as long as the video needs to be. Mm -hmm. You need to make it to get what information you're trying to uh, impart on your audience. Do it that way. And do it your way, do it your special way, because oftentimes people show up for the subject matter and then they stay for you. So make it your own, brother. That's right. And I, I'll just also add on that. You know, over the years, there's been a ton of YouTube creators or guys who are trying to create channels, um, and they get to 50, 100,000, whatever, and then they quit. That's very, very common uh, because it's very hard to make a living doing this. And the ones that, I guess, make it past that hurdle are the ones who are consistent. That, that is the differ differentiator, if you will, like consistency. If, if you are honest and you are consistent, even if you have no talent, like me, for example, <laughs> I, I don't. Get like, let's be real. So, some people are funny. Like, I, I have none of that. I just, I don't lie, and I'm consistent. So if you do that, you will eventually be successful. Mm. I think you have talent. Not only don't that, but short. also, too, sorry, my voice is going out. <coughs> no matter how fast you grow, it feels slow in the moment until you look back over the past 12 months and you're like, wow, because you always adapt to whatever speed that you grow. It's kind of like money, like, oh, I got a raise. Well, you're going to find something to spend that money on usually. And now all of a sudden you don't have enough money again. So you always adapt. And I know guys that got 100,000 subs their first year and they're still like chasing, like he's saying, it's a never ending thing. So you got to let go of it. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. You want a shirt? Sure. Right All on. right. Come on up. There it is. All right. Let's go over here. So you got some great foundations over here. How do we retake the NRA since you have such a <laughs> giant mass of people that are blind and ignorant and fuddish? <laughs> How do we, you got Wayne LaPierre gone. That was a giant cancer poisonous garbage can. Okay, and more okay. And more I, I got what you're saying. How do, we, how do we topple the NRA? Yes. Have you ever seen those videos online where somebody sees a spider and they hit it and they kill it and then all these little babies <laughs> come out? That's the NRA board. Yeah. Until everybody that is Wayne LaPierre's crony, their buddies, until they're all gone, that organization is, is dead to me. Because 
there are so many like consistent problems after problem after problem with these people, and they do not have the best interest of, of, of you guys in mind. They have shown that over and over and over for decades. And I don't think, it wasn't until our generation of creators stood up and went, F you, that they, they went unchecked. And, and we stood up and, and they, I mean, when we were trying to get Adam Kraut on the board, yep. they literally came in and tried to stop it while we were doing exactly what we're doing right now. Also vote for Kraut. Hell yeah. yeah. Vote for Kraut. But he's look what even, he did. He's not even looking. It's so look good. Look what he did though. <laughs> Hi, Adam. No, not even looking. I tried. Nice. Yeah, I, I don't know that we can fix the NRA until, like, for me, it's a burn it all down and then start fresh. That's, that's, that's my perspective. Anybody else? I had a member of the NRA board contact me the other day and ask me what the NRA could do to become more liked or, you know, get back in it. And I gave them a list of four things that they could do right now. Was they one of them give you money? No, they don't have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're bankrupt anyway. They, but if you want to entertain that, then they, you can call me back. But no, um, <laughs> they had no idea what I was talking about. And either of the four things that I said, they, they had no clue. And I was like, well, sounds like you got a lot of work to do. And he's like, but what we can, can we do right now? I was like, didn't I give you enough stuff to do? Yeah. Is, you already suck listening. a lot. We know. They're, they're, not, they, they're not listening. And we need to make it abundantly clear to them that they are not listening to their constituency, the people they're supposed to be out there protecting. And you do that by stop giving them money. And when they call you, tell them exactly why you're not giving them any more And money. you need to go to organiza like your local gun store that has a, you know, get an NRA membership. You need to tell them to fix that. Because yeah. that's a that is how the NRA got funded largely is these these like every gun store in the country was funding them, every single one of them. They were all and, over the place. And ranges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's ranges. what I'm saying. Like, and and we we as a community need to change that. I got elected to a board of directors for a range that I use specifically to get rid of the NRA membership requirement for members. Thank you. And I did, and then I left. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question, man. Come get a shirt. All right, brother. Thank you for your service. One of you guys earlier <laughs> said that we need to make sure that we buy guns from companies that support our rights. Right. I grew up 30 or 40 minutes away from Geneseo, where Springfield Armory is headquartered and would have been directly affected by the anti-gun legislation that them and Rock River Arms attempted passing several years ago. Yeah. How do you guys as creators rectify that issue with also then getting guns from them later on Fair what, question. Do those, what do those companies have to do to earn your respect and trust back who wants Shall to take I that take one, this one? <laughs> you want to stop go ahead go ahead trader Curtis. brands are unredeemable <laughs> yeah, they are everyone dead. who worked there and was associated with that should be fired publicly we should know who they are and they should never ever work here again that is when you can talk to me again. And a million dollars would help. But. <laughs> Anybody else? So I, I, I took a more pragmatic approach to it. First off, like when that happened, I was like, oh, they're dead to me. And then uh, Springfield in particular. And then my audience just kept asking for like what I would think about X gun or Y gun that they would put out. And so I just put out polls, literally, like to the audience, hey, should I review this, yes or no? And when it got to the point that it was like 80% or more, I was like, all right, you know, if the people want to see it, people want to see it. And of course, if, like if you watch my Hellion review, I talk about that in the video, you know, just to let people know, like if they're buying this product, just be aware of that because it's a thing. I mean, Sean put a thing about that in his recent video about the Echelon. Yeah. Same, same idea. Yeah, I'm, I'm very similar to Mr. Guns and Gear. And I even had Curtis in my video saying, Trader Brand, Trader it's Company. True. It's true. <laughs> because listen, like, I'm a gun reviewer, but at the same time, I'm not trying to convince you to buy stuff. I'm not trying to convince you to get stuff. I'm trying to provide information to you so that you can make your own choices. And that, that's what I do. And so I tell you about the gun, and I tell you about the drama, and I try to provide it all in an interesting and funny way. And then at the end of it, like I'm, not, I'm never going to be like, hey, you need to go out and buy this. Not for anyone. 
I'm always just trying to, to give you information so that you can be educated when you make your own decision. It's a double-edged sword for all of us because when, when you mention something, it's you know, getting some kind of promo, right? And any promo is good promo, that, that, that sort of mentality. And even if we're going, don't buy this, people will still buy that product. You know, I, I mean, I, I know Jonathan has a story about that. And uh, what, what happened? Oh, I mean, I have guns that have given negative reviews, but I'll provide a link just in case. And people just like, yeah, I don't agree with you. I'm buying it anyway. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's kind of <laughs> wild. So no matter what approach we take, if we mention it, you know, they're, they're going to get some kind of talking. Like, I have thrown guns into the gravel on my, on my range, said, F that company, and they still exist. You know what I mean? Like, we, we don't necessarily have the control over it, but not talking about it and not, like, if they're making a good gun, then they are making a good gun, and they suck. You know what I mean? Like, that's possible, too. It's tough. It's tough. It's definitely a double-edged sword. And I'll so. also just throw out there, too, like, there's a level of support, if you will, as like a content creator. So, for example, like Springfield, again, for that example, has invited me to like a bunch of events and dinners and whatever. And I just say no. Like, I'm not willing to have my image associated with them like that. Like, I believe the Hellion was actually sent to me by Brown Owls, for example. Um, they they do I'm that a lot. I'm almost positive on that. Yeah. Remember? I think so. Um, but so, like, you know, there's a level to like, what I'm willing to accept with a company like that. Um, I guess that's, that's yeah. it. That's fine. That's fine. I, Great I question, that, man. You want a shirt? I awesome. think that, that there's the, what you saw here was a, a balanced approach across the board, like one way versus another way. And I think that's really important when we talk about a situation like that, where we have a clear uh, indication of nefarious behavior, because we need to make sure that uh, the next generation coming up is aware of what what happened and that we didn't just forget about it And that you can't just forget about it over time, but I think that all of them are valid approaches. Don't get me wrong I'm not casting shade on anybody who did anything on any Springfield products or anything like that. Hey, thanks for not casting shade <laughs> I appreciate you even if you're weird <laughs> Hey, uh, when you guys think of lever guns, do you often think of Henry repeating arms? I do. Often. I do. A lot of people do. And Henry supported this portion of the live stream. And we want to say thank you to them. They are working hard to make some really uh, interesting new guns. They're coming out with some awesome stuff. So big shout out to Henry Repeating Arms for supporting this. Let's give them a big round of applause. Henry is awesome. They couldn't be here, but we appreciate it. And I'll just add on that. Their new Lever Action 300 Blackout is sick. Wait, what? Yes. Say what? It's yeah, well, I, don't have I want one. I didn't know that existed. It does. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's take a, an online question. There's a lot of people out there watching live from all over the country, all over the world. Orly, do we have one? We do. We actually have a few. Uh, they're coming in now. Uh, we got lost in space. This is a pretty simple question for you guys. Some of y'all up there. Do beards make you like guns, or do guns make you like beards? Shit. Is it beard? Discuss. My I wife did it because I'm beards, ugly. And that's why I have one. I think not having a real job or a boss <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> allows you to have a beard, right? <laughs> I just looked down the row and went, oh, oh, yeah, there is man. a pattern. <laughs> Anthony, get on board. Right. People hate when I grow out my facial hair. They want the clean cut. Attorney. I don't care what the, you grow it for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I would just say that the, I'm just sexy, man. I just rock with that. I don't, I don't know another way to do it. It just looks good. You want it, a shirt? No, that was it, an uh, online. I'm, so, I'm <laughs> sorry. Hey, you want a shirt? I'll, I'll mail you one sometime. Really Probably. Never. All right, let's take another online question. You got one more? Come on. I do. Uh, I have one Come that's on. been a year in the making. And it's, a year it's in for the you. Uh, we have a return chat member. Right named, oh, boy. Uh, Kathy Yanis. I don't know who she is, but... Oh, I, uh, I, I might know who she is. <laughs> I think I do. She's, do asking, <laughs> she's asking what it would take to have John shave his beard. What, oh. would, it, what would it take? What would it take? Bro, he would look like an elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I got fucking nothing for that. <laughs> A lot, a shitload of money, really. Just <laughs> lots and lots. Like, I look 
like a six foot tall toddler with five o'clock shadow. Like it's not cute. It's what about cute. the early days before you let it grow out? Just yeah, go man. back to that chin strap. I think I'd, there are uh, pictures. You know, me and the guy from Smash Mouth had a conversation and he won. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was working on the Fred Durst thing, Smash Mouth. Yeah, like the early two thousands rock. It didn't work. It didn't work. Didn't you have like the perimeter beard? Yeah, yeah, right. that, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had the Amish beard. I worked at a gun store attention. in Amish country when I had that, and they all questioned whether I left the faith because I didn't have a mustache at the time. <laughs> it was really funny. They gave me weird looks all the time. I got whistled at one time by an Amish guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he was. I was like, I'm not your effing horse. Get away from me. <laughs> That, that really happened. I almost got fired. I think we should make the trend mutton chops. I think that's what we should go back to. Where's Dave from think Vertex? So? Yeah. Dave, Dave over here at Vertex has some of the best mutton chops in the entire building. I swear to you, they're amazing. All right, let's take a question. Go ahead. Hello. I was just wondering what you all thought is the biggest barrier of entry for those who are not a part of the community, who aren't aware of what's going on, who maybe don't feel comfortable handling firearms. Education. Mm. We don't have face-to-face -face conversations anymore like we used to before social media because uh, everybody's doing this crap all day long, us ourselves included. Uh, start having just invite friends to the range. They'll realize how addicting. Mean, that's how we started, right? We all went to a range once, and it was addicting and fun. Uh, and you can learn how to become your own defender because cops ain't going to be there in time. So have those conversations with people and help just help them get out of the, uh, the, the boob tube and, and into the real world. And get the next generation yeah. involved as well, because uh, the stats are in. Kids aren't hunting. Heck, they don't have time to even go outside anymore. Um, no friendos. iPad kids are super weird too. So get get your kids involved. I mean, I was involved in firearms like from the cradle, basically. It was just a way that of, of life, and that's no longer a thing. So being weird old grandpa or our drunk uncle, you know, with the guns or whatever, you know, take take the kids out. Don't actually drink with the kids, <laughs> right? But, um, but you, you're you not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying. We we have to make sure that those pe those kids now turn into responsible ad adult owners and users of those of those firearms, or else we're sunk. I, I think another thing is we have to understand that we. Let me ask you guys, I'll ask a question, but it's rhetorical. Do you want to be right or do you want to win? And what I mean by that, we are right when we say 99.9% .9 of the things that we say about gun ownership. Like, you might zig where I zag, but we're all pretty much right. But if you want to win, you'll be strategic with your approach to the people or the person that you are talking to. What happens is we want to shove our perspective down their throat. You're right, but you're losing. So instead of talking at, listen to. See what they do, ask them. You know, if somebody's like hesitant about guns, ask them what they do. They got kids, right? And, and find something that ties them emotionally to the protection of what they do. Prove to them that they have equity in their life or around them that's worth protecting. And once you draw that line, then you're just giving them the insurance policy. You're saying, here's a great way to do it. So a lot of times we are so busy being right we're yelling at and talking, talking at. But we are very, very bad at listening to, because when somebody starts saying something, and I, okay, maybe I'm the only person guilty of it, somebody starts saying something that you perceive as being anti-gun, you immediately tense up, right? Now we gotta relax, listen to, strategically align with their lifestyle, and then I think we'll see a lot of things change. Yeah, because uh, a lot of times when we're talking about converting people like that, just screaming shall not be infringed in their face is not an effective argumentative strategy. But it is it, fun. It, it's right, and it is fun. Uh, but convincing people, those that can be convinced are not really gonna be convinced by uh, just shouting the that thing at them, come up with substantive arguments to help conversate with them. I have many friends in my circle that when they first met me, they didn't even invite me to go to some of the group functions because they thought it was like the weird gun guy or whatever. Well, but, you are. Well, yeah, you, you I go am. around. Oh, right. oh, Nailed but, it. But as, as that, that interaction has matured, some of them have even purchased firearms in recent years and months because they're like, oh, okay, well, yeah, he's weird, but he's not that weird. 
<laughs> and you know, the, the barrier to entry is an interesting thing, but I promise, like, there is a community for everyone out there. Uh, yeah, just look find at the We Like Shooting audience. Yeah, find a community that you fit in with, with and like, you like anime? Cool. 3D print guns. Uh, <laughs> there, there is a community for you to, to like, bond with like-minded people over firearms. There's so many, and it's, it's, it's one of the incredible things about it. Yep. Dude, that was so accurate. It is. Yeah. It's so accurate. Where's Alex? Additionally, like, one thing I want to throw out there is a lot of these guys grew up with guns. I didn't, so I, I, I went through the experience of being intimidated by them and by people who had the knowledge, if you will. Um, and I think that's j just something, as gun owners, we, we need to make sure to put our ego aside with a new person and, uh, I guess, just not like be like, oh, you're a woman, here's a J-frame. Like, that's just, <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Uh, like, that's the wrong answer, you know? Just be approachable. I would and argue that a J-frame is the wrong answer for anybody. I'm literally carrying a J-frame right now. <laughs> <laughs> right now, right next to you. <laughs> that couldn't have gone better. No, that could have gone better. Could not. Uh, are you actually? Yes. That's very funny. That's 100%. very funny. All right, over here, brother. Uh, you want to come get your T-shirt? She got one? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she got one. Thank right. you. Uh, what's the biggest revelation that y'all have had since creating your own YouTube channel? Oh, boy. Hashtag w WLS is life. <laughs> Shout out to that crowd. <laughs> the biggest revelation is that our words have power and meaning. <clears throat> yeah, I think coming to events like this and like just meeting people, because like most of the time when we're doing this, we're staring at a lens, right? Coming and seeing people and, and interacting with them and, and, and hearing how the the content has helped them in some way is, is huge. Yeah, we, we give out the suicide prevention line at the end of every show for over a decade now. <clears throat> the other one is not realizing how many people you actually reach. Yeah. Like 10,000 views on a video seems like low when your channel gets big, but it's like bigger than a lot of cities. Sure. You know what I mean, sure. or small towns and stuff like that. So the perspective of that blew my mind. Yeah, Anybody and I else? think for me, the, the interesting thing about YouTube is I don't think any of us came into this game or content creation came into this game thinking anything highly of ourselves. We were just the average guys who decided to turn on a camera one day, didn't think it would become anything like this. So really, for the audience, anybody listening, you you have a purpose, and I mean, I'm, I'm a religious guy, so I believe God put us all on this planet for a reason. There is a reason you're here, and you can affect change. We are all just normal people. Um, yes, we have built an audience. Yes, we have a message we got behind, and, and we're supporting the Second Amendment, and the gun community in different ways. But you all also have an ability that you're put on this earth for. And maybe it is directly to impact the two-way community. Um, and so it, that's, I think, the biggest revelation that I've had is uh, I thought I was just an average person. I am an average person. But it's really cool to see like where we've all kind of come. And, and a lot of these guys I looked up to before I was even doing content and never thought I'd be on the panel. And I mean, I remember watching the panel. Uh, Hell yeah. years ago, watching, you know, when Adam was first on and all that stuff, and now I'm here on the panel. Who would have thought in just, you know, three or four short years I would be here? So take those leaps in your guys' life, and also, again, just get active, because you can impact. I mean, you might be the one in the audience who helps get rid of the NFA or something. There, you might be a plaintiff in a lawsuit one day who destroys the NFA. I mean, how cool would that be? So, yeah. you know, take those opportunities. Absolutely. I think my, my biggest revelation is uh, some of my ideas can work. You know, they're not all trash. Uh, honestly. Yeah, like, I'm embarrassed to tell people what I do. They're like, oh, what, what, what kind of work do you I'm talking to real adults and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, what kind of work do you do? Consulting work. Uh, yeah. Dude, I always, I do a I podcast. always <laughs> deflect. I always go, I shout about stuff on the internet. Like, it's, yeah. always, it's never a straight answer. Yeah. Like, it's not a real job. It wasn't something I set out to do. It was just, I'm yeah. a photographer. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I, I always give them, like, if I don't know them, I go, I own a media company. Yeah. yeah and they're like, oh, you're fancy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Actually, when I say I do a podcast, they just stop talking to me. So <laughs> it's like double benefit. They don't want to hear your diatribes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, I, I think uh, one of the biggest revelations in uh, the last few years is sitting in front of me 
I'm looking at it. Uh, you guys have made this work. Uh, you know, GunCon does not work without you guys sitting here. And this, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I mean this. Like, this doesn't work. And it's shocking to me every year. I stood out there this morning going, holy crap. I can't believe that all these people came because a few years ago, the, the, the original TGC panel, I went, why is nobody doing this? And then guys like him showed up, and he showed up, and a bunch of people showed up and said, this is a pretty cool idea, and now look at us. This is real. It's insane. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Would you like a shirt? Okay. I'm going to give you one. All right. Over here. Howdy, gents. All right. So mine's kind of a two-parter. So the last thing that you reviewed that you were excited about, part one being that was the most disappointing, and part two being the one that actually lived up to the hype that you put it on your mind, the pedestal. I got to go look at my catalog. I got to look at my catalog. Give me a second. <laughs> Back in the day when I used to do reviews, the most disappointing was the Glock 44, if anybody remember that debacle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glock hated my video, which was okay. Uh, and the, the coolest thing I got to review back then was one of the first SIG MPXs that was released, but uh, I had to take it all down because YouTube hated me. Mm. I don't do reviews, but personally, I love the new Trichicon RCR. Um, when I got that, I, I fell in love with that, and I didn't think it would blow me away, but I love that. And, um, the biggest shock recently was the Bear Creek Arsenal falling apart on me when I was at the range, so that was fun. I think you're the only one shocked. Dude, I... <laughs> hey, the comment section said 10,000 rounds, no problem, so... Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, like, just a, everybody can shoot sub-MOA, too, right? Yeah. Everybody. The ones that always stick out to me are, like, there'll be a gun that's hyped up, right? Like, everybody's like, I stand behind this. And then I get it, and I'm like, this thing feels cheap. You know, or vice versa. Like a surprising one I got recently was a Turkish M4, and the dang thing keeps running, and I'm still filming it, so I haven't got the complete video out yet. But it's way better than I anticipated for the, you know, two or three hundred bucks it costs versus a Benelli. You know. I think that there. Uh, I think one of the things that disappointed me the most is to find that there are things that still exist in our industry that are there as a matter of it's just been this way or they have captured this in a particular way uh i might get a, i'm gonna piss a lot of people off this. <laughs> all right send it magpul magazines suck and the reason Oof. that they're shipped with every gun is because they're the lowest bidder a like they're ak magazines they're glock magazines does anybody here think that they're actually good yeah what's wrong with you lots no, no, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy the AR magazines. But for instance, they're AK magazines. They ship with every gun because they were the lowest bidder. I didn't even know they made AK magazines. I didn't either. Hey, dude. Hey, you know who makes some great ma AK mags? X Tech Tactical. They're here supporting us. Yeah, that was a great look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah. I, I think for me, um, and I. I, I touch a lot of stuff, and a lot of these guys on stage, matter of fact, all of them, one way or another, when I decided to, all right, I'm going to do this YouTube thing heavy instead of, I'm the guy that comes on your show and starts a fire, then leaves, right? <laughs> so when I decided to, to kind of start doing my own thing, I took a lot of advice from everybody on this panel. And the first thing I noticed is that um, a whole lot of guns don't work, right? Now, doing what I've been doing, I've been doing this for a quarter century, operating guns. Uh, so when you ask, like, the most disappointing, I have been influenced to get into lever guns, right? And I'm... <laughs> I mean, I got prepped to do this dang on video. I done loaded the car up, drove an hour out to the range. I got props, I got everything. I got probably an hour and a half just in setup. I got 11 rounds into a 4570 and it fell apart. <laughs> Who made that? Yeah, whose gun's that? Name drop, name drop. All right, was it, was, it, it, was, it, was, it was a Ruger. All right, it was Ooh. a GBL 4570. Uh, now, to their credit, I, I emailed them and I sent the gun off on a Monday and got it back the following Tuesday. I will give them that. Um, however, that was extremely, uh, extremely, extremely disappointing. So I think when it comes to the behind the scenes things that a lot of people don't see, because I test and review a lot of stuff, I just don't put out videos. Um, I think the thing that can be most exciting is when someone actually releases something and you're generally like, yes, price point's right. It has a purpose in the market and it works. And then you're excited to tell people about it. Like you really want to promote it. Um, so I would say those are the exciting things, but getting a gun that 
breaks in 11 rounds really sucks, man. I tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then there's also the companies that they have a problem and they want to actually make sure that it is right, which is that. not necessarily across the board. You would think that in this industry that is a, a number one priority, but there are sometimes things just happen and they want to make sure that that is not indicative of their product as a whole and it's not just a lemon, that particular one. So then they go through a whole process to make sure that that isn't actually representative of their gun. There are many companies out there that take that extra effort. Yeah. Okay, so my biggest disappointment was the Bear Creek Arsenal Glock that got between the guy, time I, I got the gun yeah, for review. It was, it was that metal frame Glock piece of crap. Um, by the time I got the review done, they had pulled that product off their website. I went to launch it. I'm like, oh, let me grab an image for the thumbnail, and the gun's gone. I'm like, oh, they knew it was a pile of trash, and they didn't tell me. I, literally, I threw it into the stones. Now, the biggest, uh, like, the one that really surprised me was the new TAC Pro from Bull Armory. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. That gun is going to get... Uh, some good airtime on TGC. I, I, the review's in the can. It's very, very interesting, and they have done a very good job making a great gun at an affordable price for the category they're in. Um, that, that, to me, like, checking all the boxes, like, is it good? Is it affordable for what it is? And do I like it? Like, that, that almost surprises me more often than not. Like, when it checks all those boxes, like, oh, oh, this is not a total pile of crap. Take my money, Ben. Ben, yeah. take my money. Ben, take his money. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I just looked through my catalog, just to, for a reminder. So, yeah, new production Remington 870. I reviewed it four months ago, and it died within 200 rounds. Oof. Um, and then uh, the Smith & Wesson response, which literally blew up in my face, and I still have pieces of it in my neck. What? Uh, I didn't know you. Was it, like, really? Yeah, yeah, I didn't real. know about that. Like, it, it was recalled, and I'm pretty sure that's why. Did you put a thumb in it? I did not. <laughs> no, I, I did not. Um, you know, Smith & Wesson made it right. Remington didn't. Uh, so there's that. Um, and then the, um, the new six-hour Foxtrot 2R. It's a really compact weapon light, but for the size, it's insane. Like, to even fathom that something would, would perform like that five years ago was unimaginable. So that yeah. was a surprise. You know, Thank yeah. you for that question, brother. I appreciate you. Hey, I wanted to talk about my biggest disappointment. Oh, okay, go ahead. No, I'm just kidding. Waking I'm not up. trying to get stabbed in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> You're my biggest disappointment, Sean. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Don't we look like twins? You called me a fucking elbow. <laughs> 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 All right, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> so you've touched on the cultural battle. How do we interest and inject a shot of youth into our culture? Because, I mean, everybody here is kind of like my age. We did have a great question by a young audience member, but how do we inject a shot of youth? And then how do you approach making videos that would not only interest us, but also be interesting to youth? So I, I think we have to meet them in a different spot. Yeah. Like we are trying to uh, talk to the youth. Like right now, a lot of people are trying to talk to the youth from the youth, the yeah, youths. the youths. Mr. Gambini, the did you youths. say youth? Yeah, uh, we're, we're trying to talk to them from our par part of the world. Like we're, we're standing over here and trying to talk to the kids in the playground, and it just doesn't work, right? We need to go. Hey, man, Wait what's your favorite Call you of Duty gun? Would you like to go shoot that sometime? You know, like here's a TikTok about it. Oh, you know. have to meet these kids in a different spot. And that, man, this is the phrasing is so bad. Yep. Yeah, yeah, like it's so bad. And I would say there's certain channels that do it well. I um, think yeah. The guy you talked about printing. You're screwing. Right. Administrative Results does it really well. Um, Kentucky Ballistics does it really well. Yeah. But I don't. But <laughs> sure. <laughs> everyone sure. has their strength. 2A boys do it really, really yeah, well. Yeah. Yep. Where are they at? 2A boys, you guys still here? They're here somewhere. Go, go find them. They're awesome. And I, I would also say this. Um, so I do a lot of work with kids, right? And the one thing that we could always use when you're talking about like how to reach and going back to that culture battle, every last one of you has the tool in your pocket. It's called a share button that's on your phone. Right? The more that that goes out, for example, um, a lot of people own gun ranges, right? 
But a lot of people don't own a project like I do, where I actually built a community outreach program that's reading, writing, financial literacy, kids' education, garden farming, and guns, right? So if we can't get the parents to say, we're ready for guns, cool. You want your kid to learn how to grow a, you know, a ear of corn? Great, and when that happens, we can get them over to the guns because all we're doing is trying to get people that are still being forced on the other side to think about all the school shootings to then also get their kids in the guns. Right? We have to find a different way to get into those households, to get into those kids. But when we put information out there like that, I can tell you right now, I could put out a video saying something bad about a, about a product, a widget or a wadget, and it'll go everywhere and have fun. I'm known for saying controversial things. I do something like that, it gets fired. I put up a video of some kids shooting a gun for the first time. They're not out in the neighborhood gang banging. They're actually out being educated, smiling and laughing and having a great time learning about guns. We've taken kids into gun manufacturers so they can learn about gun careers and things like that. Nobody shares it. Nobody, and so when you think about like a pick your anti-gun politician, if there was more information out there like that, because it's being done to really answer your question, it's being done. We aren't sharing it enough because it's not the negativity, it's not the, the spicy stuff, right? So I would say find the people that are already doing it. Guns and Gear gave you a few names out there. I mean, you can always share my stuff, but share the stuff that already exists and just let people know, you know, don't just share it, caption it. Hey, hey, hey this Kevin. is what we need and do more of it. Share your thing. And we have to be very careful when it comes to videos that target younger groups, because YouTube does not like any part of, it doesn't matter if it's guns or not. If you check that box like made for kids, it disables all the comments. And then not only that, but a couple of guys I know that have channels had their own son shooting and their videos got removed and they got a strike. So it's, it's very difficult, but like he said, I think guys like Kentucky Ballistic, it, they're not targeting kids, but it's entertaining for multiple age ranges. Thank Kevin. You. Yes. Tell them where to donate to what you got going on. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you for that. Uh, if you guys would like, first of all, first of all, y'all not going to get away with that because I'm going to hold you responsible. I told you I'm known for saying stuff. I just told you that there is a project that exists in this country to teach kids how to read, write, financial literacy, garden farming, and getting them off their phones and promoting the Second Amendment, and you did not clap. <laughs> okay? Thank you. And that's because that's something we need. So if you guys would like to support that project, it is all nonprofit. And big shouts out to Brownells, which is why I'm wearing a hat today, plus I forgot to shave. Um, but big shouts out to Brownells. They help with it is uh, Give, Send, Go, because nobody would go to GoFundMe anymore. Um, it's GiveSendGo.com forward slash Greenwood. Like the color green, then the word wood. Forward slash Greenwood. I'd appreciate any support. And John, thank you for allowing me to plug yeah, that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I hey, love John, you got can I give out my cash app? <laughs> About you. <laughs> I'm, st I, I'm still like hurt by the elbow thing, dude. I can't, it was I can't just for comedy, John. It was perfect, and I can't do anything about it. Thank you so much for the question, man. Come get a shirt. All right. My hey. man Kenny on the right. How you doing? Thanks Hi. for everybody for being here today. We definitely appreciate you guys up there on the panel taking your time out to share with the group. Uh, my channel is, is based on building. It's and called Jetaman Designs. It's called Jetaman Designs, and it's based on building. I mean, this, this country, before they were manufacturers, everyone built their own. And we're getting a lot of backlash from all the different agencies and everything out here, but how would you go about, I'm building my channel, but I keep getting the, the, the strikes and everything, and I'm not really worried about that, but how would you get the word out against all of that, you know, when we got everything firing against us. I know Jonathan uh, with Tactical Toolbox goes through it and things like that, but how would Are you- Are talking you about like how you would grow the channel? Yeah, how would you grow the channel and okay. get it out to the masses? Uh, because a lot of people here, they see all of the, the manufacturers, but don't really know that they can build their own. Sure, anybody? Yeah, it's super tough. Cause they, <clears throat> excuse me, they changed the rule in 2018 that we can't show how to install any parts, how to assemble an AR lower or anything on YouTube anymore. So I had to, you know, all of us that did that had to delete our videos. And so what, the way I would used to do it was I would upload to an alternative platform the actual tutorial, show like a box of parts and then a completed gun on YouTube and then link to that video. Well, now YouTube will give you a strike for that. So unfortunately I was forced also, too, if you link to alternative platforms, the algorithm downvotes you because YouTube, it's a YouTube competitor. So I had to create an online course with a paywall.
to prevent all of that. And so the only way you're gonna, you're not gonna get any tutorial content for building guns anymore. It's done, unfortunately. So I actually have a unique, and I have no problem sharing it, and you guys can all steal this, um, going to. Yeah, because I'm not. Yeah, I don't know what I, it is, I, I, I had it. bounced around the idea and, and played with it, but I just don't have the time. A lot of one of the platforms a lot of people overlook is platforms like Kick and Twitch. They already have an inherent built-in audience. A lot of people are already watching vlogs and gaming, and it's built beyond gaming. And they already have a lot of monetization because, for example, Twitch has Amazon behind it, and their community policies and guidelines are a lot more lenient than Google and YouTube and they actually let you handle firearms on stream. So it's something that I think, and it's the, the only the caveat to that I would say it is a younger demographic, um, but you know, it's, it's another vertical that you could try to get into if you're specifically looking for that and there are monetization opportunities there and you know, there are people who stream and do very well. So if we don't have a big presence over on those platforms in the gun community, I think it's a space if you're talking about you wanna reach the youth, that's one of the platforms the youth's on. Um, it's hard for me to do live streams of legal boring stuff because I don't think kids wanna watch that over on Kick and Twitch, but maybe they would wanna watch someone, you know, build firearms and, and teach, you know, how to assemble an AR-15 and other considerations like that. So, yeah, you guys can steal my ideas. Hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate it, man. All right, let's get another question. Hey, glad to be here. Glad to see y'all got Tony Simon up on stage with you. Oh, you jerk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, good jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help it. Sorry, Kevin. Uh, no, as a gun reviewer, um, when I go through and I look on YouTube, I see the same people that are given the same reviews of guns that are given to them, and they're given the same 100%. I love this gun, love this gun, love this gun. And you see people that are given honest reviews, and the gun's crap. How do you deal with these people? Wh which people? Yeah, I'm not going to name names. No, no, but no, no. But, like, are you talking about how do we deal with the people that are clearly lying? Yeah, like okay. the shields. Okay. Like, you know, like these people are given guns from the manufacturers, and we know these guns are not. Okay, I'll, I'll start that one off. So, uh, some people are not lying. Some people get a good gun and they really, really like it. Like, uh, I, I think we had a discussion last night where a few of us didn't like a certain pistol and Mike's like, oh, I liked it, it was fine. fine. Yeah, it was good. And I've had certain things where it worked for me, but not for, like, a lot of people crapped on the Prodigy and we got a pretty good one and it seemed to work okay. You know what I mean? Like. That kind of stuff does happen, but yeah, there are people that um, are yes men for companies because they think that is the way to get ahead. They think they do it because they want more free stuff, right? Like they, oh yeah, if, if they're feeding the drug, right? And, and that's clearly not a way to go and we just don't associate with them. Right, I would say that to, to my knowledge anyway, in terms of like channels that have say more than $250,000, uh, 250,000 subscribers, excuse me. Um, there's only two that I'm aware of that will like literally accept a paid review for like a good outcome, if you will. Yeah. So it, it's honestly not that common. Like I know pretty much everyone and there's two that I know of and we don't, I, I don't associate with them, but I know it happens. Who are they? I'm <laughs> <laughs> but it, people probably know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty clear. Yeah. And you know, the cool thing is we can just change the channel. Like we don't, we don't need to deal with them. Like it, it, they'll, It'll be found out anyway if they're if they're doing things that are shady. And honestly, sometimes we just need to drink some water and mind our business. <laughs> Agree. Yeah, I think it's important not to assume if it's a good review that they were paid off because yeah. I've gotten guns that got sent out to everybody and I will get the one that screws up or vice versa. Everybody's fails and I'm like, well, mine was good. And then people are like, you're a shill. And I'm like, no, that's just what happened. You know, right. you paid shill, you paid shill. Right. How dare you disagree with everybody? Yeah. Well, and to that point, as he's saying, some of these, some of these demo guns are passed around. You guys were talking about this on, on your guys' podcast the other day. Uh, Johnny got a gun after it came to my place. Well, yeah. no wonder that thing didn't work anymore. Still had mud in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so what was I a shill because mine worked and Johnny's didn't? No, it's because I broke Johnny's gun before yeah. it got to him, right? <laughs> Somebody sent me a gun that Patton had. When was it? That the, was the impulse. Ago. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> they, they <laughs> I never did a video on that one. Me neither. <laughs> yeah, I never did it. Do you still have it? Yeah. 
<laughs> you hear that? I never did a video. I still have it. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. All right. Thank you for that question. Do you want a shirt? Oh, he's got some shirts. That's great. We'll go over here, my man. Um, for those that do uh, weapon and firearm reviews, has anybody ever thought about doing reviews of firearms before, like made before they started their channel? Well, I'm, I'm not sure. I tra I'm tracking. Like, Old, older firearms, almost like... Oh, uh, so we're doing old guns. Almost like forgotten weapons, but not ones that are disc uh, were like prototypes or anything like that. I, I mean, most of the prototypes that I'm aware of, like, they're not sending that crap to us because we'll destroy them. Well, like, um, anything anything I, on the market from, like, the 40s up, maybe. Is, is anybody doing that up here? I don't think mm -hmm. so. There's, there's probably somebody doing it. I find that stuff incredibly boring, personally. Like, I, I like the modern stuff. I'm not, the, like, there's plenty of guys that do surplus stuff. Like, I'm not your guy for that. But uh, some guys are very good at that. You know, Ian's very good yeah. at that. There's C, some others. C and Arsenal, uh, Othias. Sure. Amazing yep. channel that does a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Is there any others that we're aware of? Uh, Eric at Iraq Veteran. Oh, he yeah. Does, he does a bit of that as Duh. well. Yeah, Eric, Eric is the guy that started all that. I, remember, I found Eric through watching his Mosin videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, thanks, brother. Come up and get a shirt. Hey, let's take an online question. Shout out to everybody that's watching from wherever the hell in the world. We appreciate you. This is rad. Like, this is so cool that anybody cares. They care. They care. They're in here. It's a pretty good time in the chat. So uh, this one's from Montico. Uh, is there any other 2A group that has the instructor program out there like the NRA does? Oh. Definitely don't want to give the NRA I got my it. money. I got it. All right. Um, Guys, yeah, this. so look, I'm going to say this with love. And that's a great question, uh, whoever asked that, because if you are only relying on that particular certification or any other certification, you got your NRA cert, you went and got the big shirt that says instructor across the back, you are a liability to everyone that wants to be safe, including everybody that you steal money from. You are not providing a valid service. So start there. Two, to answer the question about where you can go, um, there is a... We, we need to push the envelope in, in training. We absolutely do. Uh, pretty sure you guys have all seen some stuff that kind of like just sucks, right? Let's just be honest, right? Um, and I know we're very critical of it. Uh, many of us on the stage get called to test our programs and different things like that. And I've been teaching for a long time. What I will say, if you, if you are looking for a new program that I truly and honestly believe is a great program and is gonna be awesome for what we're doing on a national level, the USCCA is launching a program called the Defensive Pistol Program. Now, in full transparency, a lot of you will say, well, the guys that are carrying that particular certification as a regular pistol instructor, not this new certification, they go through a class, they too would get stamped, and they go out and sometimes they provide garbage training, and some of these people just cannot perform with the equipment, I'm just being honest. With this new program coming out, when you show up, and you're trying to be the instructor that is gonna go out to the masses, when you show up for this program, either you can shoot the standard, and it, it's not an easy standard. It's obtainable, but it is not easy. If you can't shoot the standard, get your stuff, go home. You are not allowed to complete the program, right? Yeah, you clap for that, that's big. We like, y'all just not gonna clap. <laughs> I'm very sensitive, please clap, all right? So I would say, yes, I do agree that we need new standards as far as training goes, because we do have people's lives on the line. Let's be very clear about that. So I would say that's coming out uh, early August. If you guys are, there are 10, to let you know how tough it is. Uh, many people try, there are 10 people in the, the country, and I'm not saying it's unobtainium, don't get me wrong, okay? Uh, but the people that took a serious pass. So there are about 10 to 12 people in the country that are certified as counselors to teach that program. I am one of them. Hey, -o. All right. So you can um, reach out and you can get oh, that boy. new training. It's called Defensive Pistol Program. You can check more about it at uscca.com or um, just keep up with me and I'll keep you guys advised. So I, I, uh, I take, you know, this is not a slight against you, Kevin. I take huge issue with uh, USCCA and their business practices. That okay. program may be rad. Uh, I just have a hard time giving them any dollars anymore because of some of the people that they have propped up in this industry for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And they have screwed some of our fellow creators in huge ways. So, like, having a program, yes, absolutely. USCCA being the right one, maybe for now. 
until so, we get until we get a, a good replacement. But uh, I have a real hard time. Like man, the, the the business practices and the shitty things they've done to people that have given them money to say, hey, this is concealed carry insurance or whatever the hell they're selling. I, I have a real problem with that. But that's not a slight against you. I still oh, no, respect I the hell out of I, you. I, I think you guys should fight, actually. Yeah, I, I agree. Let's see a fight no. right now. We've got got I'll, I'll throw three elbows at you. But, no. <laughs> but, what, but when it comes to the standards that we should accept for people who are out there uh, instructing, I think that whether you agree with the USCCA or not, I, I think that what speaks to here is that the NRA certification is not, not enough. Mm. The NRA certification, the only Absolutely. reason that you should accept the NRA certification is so that your instructor can actually attain the insurance. Right. And then after that, they need to have a bunch of other things that they've done. So we, we tell this to everybody who asks, where should we train? You should train everywhere that you could possibly afford to train. There are so many good schools across the country. Uh, this is America, damn it, and we are really good at the gun thing. We have people who have all kinds of life experiences, whether it's military, law enforcement, uh, doing things around the country that uh, have consolidated not only their experience, but the lineage before them of experience to, con to create great programs. They exist, you will have to travel to get them, and you should expect that your instructor that you might be attending locally has attended multiple of yeah. them because there is great stuff out there that is not filtering down to the smaller communities because we just assume, oh, well, that guy can go teach concealed carry because he's got you know whatever NRA certification or whatever the state mandates. The state minimums are not enough, and we yeah. should be expecting more from our instructors by going all around the country. But dude, the states can't even pave the roads. How are they going to make a, a, a standard for anything? They, they don't, but <laughs> i got to be true. honest, and, and I'll get off that, that horse about training. I, I would say this. You know, the reason why instructors get away with being crappy is because we let them. That is the real reason. So I'll give you two pro tips before you go training with somebody. One starts with you. You know what you're deficient at. I know what I'm deficient at. And I seek out individuals that I know can make me better in those ways, right? Uh, so be honest with yourself and go out and look for somebody that fits that. One thing that we're doing bad, you can take somebody that really honestly just doesn't know what they're doing, but because everybody wants to be so tactical, they'll play that image, right? Because they just want the dollars. And then you show up, you get horrible training, but you get to play kind of cool with the play carry and the AR and you look like a cool kid, right? You didn't learn anything. You threw a thousand rounds downrange in six hours. You're physically tired and you're like, oh God, I trained. You didn't do anything. You didn't do shit. Okay, you can't shoot. Um, <laughs> the, the second thing is ask your instructor. Here's a pro tip. You can research them online. You know, do your due diligence. Ask some friends. Ask around. Um, but I want you to ask that company, what is your philosophy behind training? If they cannot give you an answer to their philosophy, if they don't have a true philosophy to why they train, I'm telling you right now, they are just taking your money. That is it. They should, and you should hold them accountable. So as long as you keep letting the guys give you the state minimum standards, then they're going to keep doing it because guess what? Uh, in, in real life, you'll go to one guy for whatever you need, and you're like, oh, cool, this, this class is 80 bucks, right? And then you look down the street, and this guy is... 280 bucks, there's a reason why. And when you show up to the $80 class and there are 80 of you, right? And then there are the $280 class, there are 10 people, they're getting better training. So we are allowing that to happen. Starve them out, don't give them any money, require more from them, and challenge them about what they stand for. And you'll see a change. A and the question. other question that you need to ask that instructor before you go train with them is when was the last time they attended training? Yeah, that's mm. a good one. Because People who are serious about training people train themselves. They go all over the country to train with other people because they know that they just have one part of the pie, one piece of the pie or piece of the pizza or whatever it is that you want to do, right? Pizza but pie. Pizza pie, yeah. Um, they need to have perspective from all around the country. So if they are serious about training people, they've attended at least one course in the last year. If they tell you that they haven't gone anywhere to train, you should probably look somewhere else. I have a minimum for myself and my team. You will train once a quarter with someone. And if you don't train once a quarter, turn to my shirt, get off my range.
right? Because we need, even if it's just somebody that's, you know, good and they can help you be something. So, yeah, he's absolutely right. If they aren't training, if you meet that person that's like, I'm God's gift to guns, right? And they haven't took a training class in called? two years. <laughs> what? What did you say? Did you say my name? Oh, you're God? No, God's gift to guns. That's what you are? Yeah. Are you going to change your channel name now? See, seek out people, that, to Curtis's point, if they won't go train with other people, uh, and if all they do is bicker about how they're the best and you don't see them working with anybody else and they can't take critique, I, I would say don't waste your money because right. you can change them. I'm telling you, because if you aren't spending your money, they will change their tune. Thanks, Kevin. All right, let's get another question. Thank you. Uh, let's go over here. So I get close to that mic, brother. Sorry, I uh, I'm a bigger guy, obviously. I'm six three, about three hundred pounds. Okay. So I carry full size constantly. Right now, I'm carrying Glock forty, Crimson Trace with a TLR one. What would you recommend as a replacement option? Uh, a bigger gun. <laughs> <laughs> the Mark twenty three. Okay. The, which did you say? Did you just recommend a forty? The Mark twenty three. Oh, HK's here. Yeah. It's, about, it's yeah. about your size. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Mark 23. Anybody else want to add to that? He said, what would you recommend to carry? He's a bigger dude and wants well, to carry. Guy? Yeah. 10 millimeter. Um, Full size all gun. the millimeters. 2011. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. There's lots of, there's so many good guns. Like, we're kind of spoiled for choice right now. Yeah. You just need to go find out what you like and, you know, carry that and carry Desert Eagle if you're good with it. I think a lot of people just forget that, like, the, the thing that really matters is, do you have a ton of rounds? Can you like can you have a ton of rounds on you? And are you good with it? Because yeah. if you're not good with it, what, what are you doing, right? Yeah. Right. So I kid you not, there I was at the grocery store carrying like a two, J frame two weeks ago. No, I wasn't. <laughs> um, but I see this guy who's like rail skinny, clearly appendix carrying a gigantic gun, like wearing a James Reeves tight shirt. <laughs> and I was like, bro, I was like, what are you carrying? He was carrying a Desert Eagle. I kid you not. It was, I mean, I could see the entire gun. I was like, that's fantastic. Anyway, I just had to throw that out there. <laughs> I tried it once. It is so freaking heavy. It is so heavy. It's like you're walking with a freaking limp. It gives you scoliosis. Yeah, man, I can tell you at um, one point in time, uh, I want to say 13, 14 or 15 years ago, I started my journey. So at one point in time, I got up to 454 pounds, yeah. right? Um, and while I was working on not dying, uh, one gun that I became a big fan of that worked for me uh, from everything from length of barrel to grip to ergonomics with big hands, especially when they were swollen all the time, uh, was the HK VP9. Uh, tremendous fan of that firearm. It's, 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 a, it's not a heavy gun. Uh, you're going to get plenty of rounds, uh, a lot of aftermarket support for it. I know they've, they've gone up a little bit in price. They're, they're a little bit uh, pricier than they used to be, but I carried that for probably six years continuously, and it always worked in all the needs while I was working on kind of getting that weight down. So that, that could be a good option for you. Sure. Hey, hey, brother, while you're there, can I ask you another question? Yo. So you carry a big gun, right? Do, sure. do, you carry a, do you carry a tourniquet? No. We're not getting back into training. <laughs> <laughs> We're not getting back into training. That is a, come get a shirt from one of these guys. Also, uh, go get med training. And we'll just leave it there, like if you haven't, good Lord. All right, my man over here. Hey, I got a question. Um, What's that okay, I see reviews on uh, VCM, Sons of Liberty, and they're always pretty good. I mean, I think I got a they seem like a good gun. I'm thinking about buying one of them. Uh, I got a few, <laughs> a few other AK, I mean ARs. But my question is, would those BCM and Sons of Liberty, would they be as good on a uh, PSA lower? I mean, they're out there. How good are PSA lowers? Can you tell me that? I mean, mm. Mr. Guns and Gear practically helped build that company. Yeah, that's true. I recused um, myself. That's a long story. But, um, <laughs> but, but so if the lower's in spec, I mean, and built correctly, stake castle nut, et cetera, I mean, it'll run absolutely fine. The critical components on your AR are in the upper, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, that said, I think uh, Lucas over at T-Rex Arms um, had some small components failure on like a real high round count he did. I'm not sure that would be different though on any other brand, if that makes sense. Um, but I have some very high round count PSA lowers and they've been fine. Uh, I assembled all of them, so you know, I assume that they were assembled correctly. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's definitely, 
in terms of an AR-15, if you're trying to budget money for what parts to prioritize, the yeah. upper is where you're going to make your money, if you yeah, will. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. The, okay. the awesome. other thing you should look at when it comes to your lower, because I have, for instance, a couple like SBRs that I built on poverty pony lowers. You have to inspect the lower when you're buying it, because sometimes the machine might slip or something like that, and might be uh, on one of them, mine, for instance, the uh, the magazine release hole is actually rotated slightly. That's something that can trip you up. Like those small points of QC are just things that you need to inspect in the store when you buy them. But to Mike's point, if all of that stuff is right, you're going to be just fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. I just want to make sure that you all know that this has been absolutely incredible for me this year. I mean, you guys have come from all over the country, all over the Midwest. I mean, we had a, we had a couple of people flying in. You know, I, I heard stories of 19 hours to drive here from, yeah, like he's That's raising legit. his hand in the back. I mean, you guys have come so far just to see us, and I can't tell you how much we really appreciate you guys. Let's give a big round of applause to everybody that's out there watching, sitting right here. Yeah, you guys. It's, it's, uh, it's about the time for us to wrap up. Do you guys want to say anything else? I just want to say one thing, uh, and I want you guys to hear my heart when I say this. Years and years ago, when I started on this journey, I started off as a civil rights advocate. And when it came to the guns, and I want you to hear me clear when I say this, listen to my heart. Rooms like this, I was told to stay away from. People like you, I was told to stay away from. And I'm here to tell you, that's why I'm telling you the way that you represent yourself and the way that you talk about gun ownership is so important because now I smile. Like this has been an awesome weekend. I'm running around high five and taking photos. I know the amount of love, passion, love for country, love for people, love for family that exists in this room. What I would challenge you guys to do is show more people the love that I experience, right? If they can see that side of you, I think that you would see a lot more people come into the space and come into the rooms because this is exactly, and I mean it, hear me. This is exactly what anti-freedom people are scared of. Right? It's not the gun, it's the unity. Right? So just remember that. You are doing something great. I'm happy to see your faces. I can't wait to hug you and, and, and you know, high five you. But you are, by simply showing up to GunCon, you are leading a change and a representation that we need in this country to unify us all. So personally, I want to say thank you for proving what they told me 25 years was unsafe. And I feel the safest I've ever been every time I'm in rooms like this. So thank you guys. Thank you, Ken Ross. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for actually caring enough to do this and be here and to help us do what we do. We don't do it without your support and the fact that you guys and gals care about the future just because of the questions we had. We're on the right course. It's a tough road to hold, but we are all one team. So thank you for caring. Uh, because you know, the 10 people here could care, but if we don't have all y'all to help us get the word out and to actually be the forces on the ground, it's a different country. So thank you very much. And, and John, before we leave, I would just like to know if now is a good time to give out my cash app. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. All right. You know, no. I actually... You know where that is. You know, it's I actually OnlyFans.com slash Hobbit feet. They wouldn't let me do it. Like, they actually kicked me off of OnlyFans. I was going to, like, lube guns to porn music, and they wouldn't, they, no, nah, they wouldn't let me do it. Yeah, you should try, we just posted porn dars, and they let us keep it. Uh, I think I didn't think about it. But what I would say, seriously, though, is, like, we are here because you guys put us here. We aren't just leaders that just manifested themselves. Like, we are here because you guys believed in the messages that we were putting out, and I cannot... I said this to every single person here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm here because you guys put me here. And I don't think that, I think that oftentimes we get wrapped up in the work. We always have to remember that um, it's because of you guys that we're able to do what we do. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for being here, Curtis. Brother's got a hug.
Hey, uh, before we move on to the next person, can somebody in the room see if you can find Cody Hinton? Just yeah, where's Cody? We'll keep rolling, but go ahead. Will Patton. <laughs> uh, I just want to say again, thank you, John, for putting all this and, and getting this amazing group together. Um, the only words I would have for you guys is we all know this is an important year. We have an important election coming up. Stay passionate. Don't give up hope. This nation was founded on some important principles. And regardless of what happens, it's, it's our job to maintain those principles, maintain those foundations, despite what's going on. And if we want, again, we've talked about it a lot on different panels, 10 million gun owners, registered gun owners and hunters who didn't vote, who aren't registered to vote. So if you're not registered to vote and you don't vote, I mean, honestly, do you have room to complain? You're not using one of the principal things that our nation was founded on, which is voicing your opinion. So get out and vote. Anybody else? On that note, one thing I will say is I watched almost every one of these guys before I ever started the channel. And the one thing that every one of them, like, Sorry, I'm looking for the right word to say. The one thing that didn't surprise me but did surprise me was everybody up here is just pro-freedom. Like, they don't care if it comes from what side or the other. If it's infringing rights, they're not afraid to speak up. But going back to that, none of us have a voice without an audience. So thank you. Thank you. I just want to say a massive thank you to, uh, of course, Brownells. Yes, this is incredible, right? Brownells has stepped up huge to support this. And uh, there's one person in particular, I have been calling him my better half. Uh, somebody called me, uh, called him my brother earlier. It's kind of funny. I just want to say um, a big thank you to Cody Hinton for helping me put this. A lot of people have been giving me credit all day. I couldn't do it alone. Cody, right there, raise your hand. That guy needs a huge round. Stand up. Give him a stand up. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. We love you, Cody. I will, just, you. I will add a behind-the-scenes note on that. When John told me how big this year was going to be, I literally texted Cody, and I said, you're so fucked. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong, not wrong. <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, this has been an incredible year. I know a lot of you are going, when's the giveaways? When's the giveaways? When's the giveaways? We're going to get to them very soon. Thank you for giving a shit. Thank you for being here. That's it for this year. <laughs>